So these are the two supports that hold the ceramic glass inside the box. And they're actually set at um, about 45 millimetre. And they've do, they were at 60 millimetre, so I've reduced them to 45. So basically these simply fit in this position in there. And then this other side here. And then this piece of ceramic glass will go in here. And basically what that means is, as the flame comes around this return, it hits this plate up here, travels along and comes out this slot. Now by lowering this, we're increasing the resistance, which may have some effect on um, the vortex and how it forms and how easy it is to keep it near the back of a box. So we'll give that a try and see what happens. Okay, so we've got a wedge of wood in there. I've just got a couple of little fire lighters I put now. I haven't got any of the organic ones. These tend to smoke like mad. They're terrible for smoking up the top glass, but it quickly burns off, but it hasn't smoked it up yet. Um, we'll come back in a couple of minutes and see how it's getting on. Oh, by the way, I'm, um, I've made these doors out of a cement and I painted them with a silver high temperature paint. But this particular area, I mean, this glass is going over, way over 500 degrees centigrade. And um, yeah, that, that teak proof paint isn't working very well. So I'm gonna have to scrape that off and redo it, which is a bit of a shame. The lower door is okay, but even then we're still getting a bit of scenes of deterioration there as well. And uh, we'll see how it goes after this fire. Now this is quite interesting because by lowering that gap, it's caused more resistance. Um, but unfortunately it's stopped the fire from starting up as easily as it normally does. I've never ever since day one with the Vortex stove had any issues with start up. But um, yeah, this is not catching very well. It's, it's been there for about five minutes. The fire lighters have died down and uh, the wood seems to be struggling to catch fire. And the top glass has gone black. So it's, it's amazing how much difference, just these little, um, you just make it small changes and be quite big differences. However, um, today, I mean, we've got 17 degrees uh, centigrade ambient temperature and absolutely zero wind. You couldn't get a much nicer autumn day, but um, it's not doing the fire any favors. I mean, a bit of wind and a bit cooler, it might be a different story. But again, that, that's, a, that's the whole, that is the story with the Vortex stove. It's, it always seems to be a little bit fickle. It's affected by um, so many factors and uh, we're still striving to find that ideal settings, but uh, we'll see what happens. We'll come back in another few minutes. In actual fact, looking at it closely, I don't think the glass actually has gone black. It's just that there's no vortex flame. So yeah, it might not be quite as bad as we thought. Okay, so here we go. Look, we're literally just a couple of minutes later and the vortex is starting to form now. And uh, so that, that, that's more promising. Um, we'll come back in another couple of minutes and see what's going on then so another couple of minutes have gone past and we can see it was very a very sooty start up you can just see the top of the, the vortex afterburner chamber is starting to clear and the sides are starting to clear the soot away now so um i think another couple of minutes and it should be pretty much um completely clear okay so now we're exactly 12 minutes uh, since i lit the fire and you can see most of the soot is now burnt off the fire is, is running pretty well but we've got all the vents open at the moment we've got these these vents and these vents open so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stuff a rag in the bottom vents and um see how well see what happens and see how well the the, the stove behaves okay so we're now close to 20 minutes about 19 minutes since i lit the fire and i've got my rag stuffing these holes so the air is going through the two vents um, which is taking the air behind the stove and running back uh, underneath the sloping glass. So in theory, that is being preheated. Although I don't think it gets really seriously preheated until the whole fire is burnt right down and the ashes are, are lying on the glass and then that air is, is very preheated. But never mind, um, it's all about the experimenting. So if anything, that flame looks a little bit starved of air. I mean, it's certainly well behaved. The fire is burning really nicely and uh, we've got no issues with over fueling in fact um, the vortex is staying right near the back and the actual vortex the afterburner chamber is getting starting to glow red hot 
So, it, I mean, it, it is working, it is working. It doesn't seem quite as lively or as powerful um, as it was when we had a, a larger gap in the top box. That's 60 mils now being reduced to 45 mil. And that definitely seems to be having an effect. We just have to let it burn a little bit longer and see what happens and how it develops. So we're just a couple of minutes on from my last shot. I haven't actually taken um, the rag out. We've still got it running just with the preheated air coming through the back of the stove. Uh, I don't know if my phone will catch this very well, but it's really interesting. It's these um, lovely vortex. It's coming right, pretty staying centre of vortex and coming right up to the front glass, but not actually overlapping. In fact, I've got to move back a bit from that. Let's, um, let's move right back because that's that's getting really, really hot. So, okay, so I'll put it on um, three times magnification. Saves my phone from melting. Yeah, I mean, that's really quite spectacular, especially the one on the left-hand side. That's working really well. Um, why it's biased, I don't know. So imagine it's probably because the stove itself, let's have a look, is burning more one side than the other. Uh, I don't know, it looks pretty good, but um, we definitely got a slightly biased vortex, but... Uh, that undoubtedly will clear before long. Yeah, I mean, that, that's really humming along really nicely. I'll check a few temperatures with my heat gun on top of the glass and we'll see how that's going. Okay, so we've got the heat gun. Let's have a look. So we'll start off by shining it dead center of the top plate. So basically we've got 300 degrees. Well, you know, 297, we move it around a little bit. So we move it right near the back and just under where the chimney exit. So we've got 300. Let's move it right near the front. Uh, we've got 240, 250. Let's move it to the sides. You know, it goes down a little bit around there. We've got 215 there. We move it across to the opposite side. And we, well, we went a bit too far there. So it's even lower. We've got around about 205. So it's not bad. I mean, it's pretty even over the over the whole plate. I mean, without that bottom, without the internal glass, um, this top glass can go well over 400, 500, I've seen it. So this is a much better cooking temperature and it's certainly a lot more even. And if you just move this over the whole plate, just moving it around, I mean, it varies from, you know, it's averaging sort of 250 to 300, which is really cool. I like that. We'll shine it on this front glass. The only thing is that when you shine it on the front glass, it doesn't, it doesn't give true readings um, because the glass simply doesn't like it. But anyhow, we're showing over 400. And uh, the vortex, look at it now. It's really humming along. So we've just got our preheated air going in and that must be being preheated now. As you can see, the flames are sort of getting down near the glass. And that's humming along really, really nicely. What we really need to do is wait a little bit longer and then put some more wood in on top of the, the raging fire and see if we get the huge, the normal overfueling problems. We'll give it a whiz in so there. As you can see, I've chucked in some very, very dry wood on top of our raging fire. We've still got our towel blocking those vents and we've just got our side vents open. Let's see what's going to happen. I suspect, you know, in a few minutes, it will be overfueling, but Hopefully it won't last for too long. You can see the flames are in increasing, but no, I mean, that so far it seems quite well behaved. Let's have a look what's going on down here. I mean, this wood is most definitely catching. Okay, it's starting to get, um, we're starting to get a bit of flashing. Not too bad, not too bad at all at the moment. It's growing and growing. And we're definitely getting some flashing now. I mean, I can tell that you that there's no smoke coming out the chimneys, absolutely none whatsoever. So the fuel is still, um, the fire's still burning off all the smoke, but we are getting a bit of escaping fuel. Well, I'm gonna move back again. Now it's getting seriously hot. And I mean, our wood is well and truly on fire. Yeah, and we most definitely are getting overfueling now. So we're back to our normal problem. Um, I think it, this might have been a slight improvement. I mean, what I've learned from this so far is uh, it was more difficult to start up. Uh, no doubt about that. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I think I, I, what I'll try is I'll try pulling out this rag and see if that makes any difference at all. It's going to supply a lot more air. I'm going to certainly change the shape of the fire. Oh yeah, it's going now. Let's change the shape of the vortex. And I was feeding it more oxygen. Yeah, I, you know, it's still flashing like mad. So we've got all vents open at this moment. Yeah, I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, I think we're sort of getting away with that. I mean, that wood is well and truly on fire. And the vortex is, you know, well, it's a little bit out of control, to be fair. Looks impressive, though. They always does. I mean, we haven't got, we aren't getting any black smoke, so I don't suppose I should be complaining too much. It's always great to watch, though. You know, it's spellbinding, and that's definitely dying down now. It's starting to get more under control, and we've got all the vents open. All that happens if we just close these vents out of interest. I close those. So, oh yeah, no, that, that's, <laughs> that's interesting. It's because this set is a lot more pressure now blowing through these holes and it's blowing directly onto the fire. You can see it's changed shape. Yeah, no, that, that doesn't work. That is definitely going a bit pear-shaped now. We'll open those back up. And I think we're gonna plug these holes again. Just bear with me while I plug these holes. Up. Okay, so I've stuffed the towel back in the holes and uh, I think that brings it under control a little bit more. I think that helps, it definitely helps. I wonder what happens if we just close one of these vents. Okay, look at that, that that's absolutely instant. Look, we've got, um, we got overfueling going like mad now. Yeah, my God, yeah, we, we definitely need more air. So let's open that back up and look at that. that, that's quite interesting. That calms down absolutely in seconds, that calms right down. We try that again just for the fun of it. We'll close that one down. Yep, and we've got instant, huge increase, huge increase of, of the flashing coming past the end of the afterburner. Open it up again. Yeah, and it, sh and it calms it right down straight away. It shows how critical the, the air supply is. I can't hold my phone that close. I can actually smell the rubber on my, um, my phone case. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's melting. That's incredibly hot. I'll get my temperature gone out now. Now that we've added that extra wood, that's definitely bumped up the temperatures. We'll have a look. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, okay, so we're now up to 380. Uh, let's find the hottest spot. Yeah, 391. So we're getting very, very close to 400 degrees centigrade. Um, after adding that extra fuel. I think what I might do, just for the fun of it, I can open the afterburner. Let's see what it says on this glass 470. We can open the, the afterburner door and we'll shine the gun in there. Um, just bear with me, I'll have a go at that. Okay, so we've opened the door. As you can see, it's absolutely red hot in there. Let's see if we can get our temperature gun. So 750, 78, 757. And look at the smoke, this black smoke forming. It doesn't like that much. But we're round about just over the 700 now. Right, let's close this door quick. It didn't like that. Um, well, I think we even got a few puffs of smoke coming out the chimney then. But uh, now we've brought it back under control. We're back to normal again. Yeah, so I mean, you know, what, what we about um, six, seven minutes after I added that wood, most of that wood is probably burnt away now, it's carbonized. And uh, yeah, and it stayed under control. So a very interesting experiment. I guess next time we have to cut down, lower the plate inside the top box to another 10 mil and see what happens. I've got a feeling it's gonna be more difficult to start. But we did have a, you know, it was a bit slow to start, but I think this has been quite a successful run. I'll um, lighting up a fire in the next couple of days, next time I get a chance. I'll catch you then.